Welcome to episode 379 of We Don't Die Radio. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And this is another video episode. So if you are listening and you'd rather be watching us, you can go over to YouTube, type in We Don't Die Radio 379. It's been close to a year, and I thought today we would have back my good friends. They're two of my bestest friends in the world. They're also mediums and tutors, and they teach our online classes. They run the Spirit and Soul Foundation. Their names are Carrie McLeod and Philip Dykes. You can find them at the Spirit and Soul Foundation.co.uk or running almost all of our online classes at we don't die.com carrie and phil welcome back to we don't die Hello, Radio. Sandra, it's an good absolute to be back. pleasure to be here it is. 379 wow yes. is that not crazy that's madness that really that's, is madness. that's excellent a lot of time a lot of time but i get to see you guys quite often we just finished doing our weekly sunday gathering which was number 116 a lot of time so it feels to me like i see you a lot and i get to partake in all of your wisdom and teachings but everybody else may not so i thought it'd be great to catch back up with you guys in this format let everybody know what you're doing how it's been going and then we can ask you some questions how does that sound sounds absolutely perfect absolutely all right well Let's just talk about what's happening right now. We're recording this in June. Let us know what you've been doing, because I know back when old COVID hit a couple of years ago, we started some online classes. What are you currently doing? We've been busy doing weekly classes. It's kind of grown. The three of us got together and decided we'd do psychic and mediumship classes. And we thought we'd do one a week and then two a week and then three a week and two years later it's grown into something that we are so so proud of we're reaching so many people bringing healing and understanding to so many people the opportunity to touch so many homes that have grief touch them or that are curious about mediumship is incredible and I know COVID has been an awful time for so much of this world but the silver lining is we've been able to reach out and and really touch a lot of homes and people with what we believe is the truth which is we don't die absolutely it's been incredible i mean we set out to make a difference raise the standards but we've ended up building a community with your help sandra of people that really didn't have a home or fit in and and now they've found a a home and they're meeting new friends from all over the world it's created so many possibilities and opportunities for people that maybe they wouldn't have had before covid um so for us we're extremely proud and, and to really show how proud we are we've had one of the students today on the sunday gathering do doing their inspirational speaking from the inspirational inspirational writing course um there's so many people now that have been with us for a, a length of time and the real potentials and qualities are really starting to shine and it's really proud i know it's not just me it's kerry as well and, and you sandra that we see people growing, we see people developing and, and they're, they're really finding that spark of life back. They've come through that journey of grief, maybe they, they've come from all different walks of life. But to see them smile again, to laugh again, to really enjoy life, it's incredible just, just to think, be part of. And that community isn't, cre- it's maybe created by the three of us, but the community actually holds people in it that have daily and weekly contact where they're having hard times different members of the community are reaching out it's a community that is held together on a set of values and ethics and morals which is about caring which is about loving which is about spirituality which is about be the best person you can be and we couldn't have foreseen two years ago that we would be able to create something like that so since we've last spoken to you guys out there there has been such a lot happening Mm -hmm. and we're so so grateful we don't take anything for granted because 
it's of the community and driven by them. In fact, talking about community, something you've just said, Kerry, um, we know that you all support each other um, in that community. And it's been really nice to see some of the face pictures on Facebook and social media where you've rallied round and gone visiting people, visiting each other. It, it's just, it's brought tears to our eyes where we've seen it and said, oh my God, these people are together because they wanted to. And those that may have one or two difficulties, see the others rallying around and supporting and lifting. It, it really is incredible. We're, we're speechless for what's been created, really. We, it could be us, maybe soon. Mm. over the other side of the Atlantic, having little coffee mornings all over the place where people can pop in. That would be fabulous just to have an informal chat with people and, and be that place where people can come together maybe in the next nine months. Mm. I would think so. I would think so. We'll get into talking about the afterlife in just a, a minute or so. But Phil, I want to ask you today, you've picked an interesting theme of inspiration. Why, why inspiration? Why'd you pick our theme of joyful well, inspiration? For me, inspiration is, is all around us. It can be the most simplest thing that we experience, that we come across. Um, it, it doesn't have to be created. I know we can create inspiration. We can listen to people talk and be inspired, like a passive inspiration. But for me, you can leave your front door and that sunshine hits you and you just automatically feel better. You can travel a few minutes or we're lucky enough to live in the country. Um, you've got nature all around you, the trees, the flowers. I mean, we just spend a moment looking at flowers. The colours are absolutely terrific and, and the scent of them is terrific as well. And they hold so many memories. And if we just stay in that second of the flowers and the colours, we know that scent or smell is hardwired to the brain. It brings back memories of the past. So it could be where you have people now in the spirit world or you've got a favourite memory with somebody that certain smell will instantaneously transport you back to that memory. So for me, that's where inspiration comes from, where it, it, it's individual and it's what makes us happy. It doesn't have to affect everybody else, but in that moment, we can just feel lucky to be alive. We can feel inspired to do something good, to have an act of kindness or, or go out of our way. Sometimes we have to think about those things, but in that moment when something affects us, inspires us, it's just a natural byproduct of who we are. Yeah, I completely agree. And we were talking just a little bit earlier that um, every time we show up on the Sunday gathering or I do one of these episodes, it's all big smiles and everything. And what's underneath all of it, I think for all of us is that we are joined by grief I think many people start looking for evidence of the afterlife or want to tap into their own spirituality because of some sort of loss now we never really lose people because they are around and we are going to see them again but it is very hard to convince our humanity of the truth of that so I know when you talk about inspiration and joy I mean there's some things that we can do really to make us feel better and help us through. So what I want to do now is ask you guys some questions. And I thought about this because this past Friday, uh, the three of us were on a demonstration together. I was hostess with the most, just as you call me, and you guys were the, the demonstrating mediums. And I have to say in a good way, you guys were on fire. The level of evidence that you brought through working with the spirit world to let the recipients know that their loved ones are still around not vague, not I've got a man with an R name, none of that. Such beautiful specifics that behind the scenes, you know, I had my Kleenex and I, you know, I just, I just felt it to my core that these loved ones were here. And so first of all, thank you for all the training you've done and your level of integrity, not only in demonstrating mediumship, but teaching it to that level it's extraordinary but at the end there were some folks that asked some questions and I thought to myself like I said I'm always roses and butterflies you know sharing the good word but I remember firsthand exactly how hard grief is and I thought maybe we could maybe start with the question that this woman had asked and then ask some of the other questions that 
may not get asked because of some of the tougher questions. Do you want to fill us in on that question and what your response was? Yeah, absolutely. There was a lovely lady that came on and sadly her husband had transitioned to the spirit world way before anybody had thought he should. And her thoughts were um, about how she wondered how he was doing and how he was there and what his hopes and dreams would be for her. And she knew what he would be wanting for her. She knew he would want her to be comfortable and as happy as she can be and not be lonely. But she'd been told there by, by some, in some readings she'd received that her husband wanted her to find another partner. And was that something that her husband would really want for her? And we asked her, what do you think your husband would say? And she said, well, I actually think my husband would want me to be happy and not lonely. And we confirmed that that's what most of our loved ones want for us, is to be happy and not to be lonely. But when we are in the depths of grief, there are some things that don't even touch removing that grief. There are some things that, that don't allow us um, any respite from the grief. Grief itself is all consuming at times and because it's the worst thing to go through. So when we're in the depths of grief and we are told perhaps that our loved one in the spirit world, especially a husband or a wife or a partner, is wanting us to meet somebody else, that's the last thing we want for ourselves. You know, the, the lady had said, does that mean my husband wants to move on mm. if, I'm, if I'm going to get a new partner? Absolutely not. Love connects us beyond any physical world. And in within that spiritual world, that world of love, our relations, our partners and our loved ones and friends only want the best for us. So in time, her and I agreed that where you're not going anywhere, but were we to have partners in the spirit world, maybe when I'm 80 or 90, I might want a companion, but I won't know I want that until I'm ready. Mm. And somebody telling me that well, is not going to diminish my grief at all. Yeah. I think there's a, a few areas we need to cover here. First of all, we know the spirit world's highly intelligent. So if that needed to be said in that moment uh, and that person's picked it up, then fair enough, if that, that's what that husband wanted to say but the wife and I would agree that that wasn't appropriate because when somebody's in deep grief the last thing they want to think about is moving on finding something new finding a love because they've just lost a love that can never be replaced god forbid anything happened to Kerry and Kerry come through I know Kerry understands how I feel about it and I know the last thing she would say to me is it's time to move on it's time to because You've only, I've only just lost her. So I know sometimes the medium struggles with what to say, how to deal with this level of grief. And they will add things on such as, oh, your partner wants to, you meet, to meet somebody else because they want you to be happy. Okay, in the medium's understanding, they might feel they're doing the best thing at that point because they're trying to console somebody. But when we're working with that world of intelligence, they know their story, how to bring it, because a medium's job is about inspiring the living. So as long as they're doing what the spirit world wants them to do, giving the evidence in the way that it's meant to be given, bringing the evidence that the spirit world want to bring, it's going to create memories. It's going to bring comfort. It's going to bring healing. It's not going to get rid of grief. No medium can get rid of grief. grief. Grief is a personal journey. We've all been through that. And there's certain sayings within uh, what people say to us that are not appropriate. And, and I think that's one of them, that you, you, somebody, loved one, wants you to move on, especially when it's so soon and we're still in love with that person. Because the same person asked the question, will they still love me in the spirit world? So you can see how inappropriate those comments were, because then it plants other seeds of doubt does he, is he, does he still love me? Is he still in the spirit world? Is he living on? Has he forgotten about me? It creates even more distress in them. So I think at times we all need to 
understand what grief does and take almost a, a course and be educated on the things we should say and shouldn't say. But again, we've got to be intuitive in that moment to realize how that person in front of us is feeling. Um, and I'm sure it's the same way with Kerry. If I went to the spirit world, she'd be heartbroken, hopefully. Um, no, only joking. But it, it's a case of it, we have to be very careful as a medium because people live on every word we say and, and take it for granted mm -hmm. that we um, know exactly what we're saying. And, and to go into the tutor mode, sometimes what we, myself and Kerry, try to do is bring people's awareness from those that are developing their mediumship when they feel something they could possibly misunderstand so when they're feeling they should be saying well i'm aware or i feel instead of say i'm being told because they're not being told so if we can get mediums to present their information their evidence in the way that it comes it will help them understand the best way to present it but also have understand the full impact it's having on people Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And the spirit world is very loving. So if someone does have multiple spouses <laughs> that meet up with them, absolutely. There's absolutely. Love there. There's, we've, we've had people from the spirit world where two or three husbands have come in together and they've had that joke there, between that humor there between them. But they're all connected on the fact that they all love the one person that's here, knowing that each individual one of them is individual, is unique, and that the person still living and breathing and walking the earth loved them in a different way, not any more or less, but just differently. And that's what we have to appreciate is when love connects us, we know when we have more than one child or more than one pet, we might love one more for that part of their humor and that one for their intellect, but we don't love them generally more or less. We love them all because they're in our lives. Oh, great, great answer. Another tough question. With my dad, who was passed now 12 years ago, which is hard to fathom that it's been that long, but I can clearly the re remember the days and hours, moments, of, leading up to his physical death he was in excruciating pain as drugged up as he was with cancer it was the worst thing i've really ever had to witness i have heard people say that the soul can leave the body before the body dies is there any truth to that and then also do they remember the pain when they cross over mm. well i think that we have to look at evidence so there's a memory within the consciousness of the person um, within your, I'm going to keep it to your father. That's okay. So there's a memory there and you've got to bring that evidence forward for you to recognize them. Does that still mean that they're living that experience? Absolutely not. It's a memory they've got to help you recognize them. And that's what evidence is about. And there's different kinds of evidence. We, we've, we've talked about the condition of the, the physical body and how it may suffer. That will be a very tiny part at the beginning, maybe. Or if it's poignant where you were sat with your father right at the end and you were helping comfort him and everything, then they'll come back and say, you understand how I was. But what you did for me, like holding my hand or mopping my brow or stroking my face or just having you there squeezing my hand made such a difference. So you've got to understand why that impact, that, that evidence is brought that way, because what they'll then say is those comforting aspects that will put the recipient um, in a place of comfort and understanding and, and, and let them feel that they made a difference and it was appreciated. Because sometimes when we lose a loved one, they can't speak to us so we're doing actions and so it's nice to hear that back mm. so as long as we understand the type of evidence but then once we the soul starts to move it lets go of all those things it lets go of all those temporary conditions so they don't feel it they don't carry it with them mm. and at that point where the person's body is taking its last few breaths it's a question we get asked a lot are they conscious? When does the soul leave the body? From the contacts that Phil and I have done and, and many other mediums around the world, 
the soul doesn't actually leave the body until the body ceases to exist, until the brain stops to function or the heart stops or something creates the circumstances that the body just cannot continue to live. But what we have been told is that as people are going through that process where the body begins to shut down, the consciousness leaves. So it shows itself when people are in comas, when people are, have severe Alzheimer's or dementia, that the consciousness, what makes them then, begins to leave the body. And almost like when we do it every night, when we sleep, our consciousness shifts and heads off and has whatever experience it has in that time and then comes back and joins. So we have to be clear about the difference between the consciousness that leaves the physical body and the soul. The soul leaves the body when the body's done with existing. And then the soul and the consciousness and all of the characteristics and personality and memories go into what we would call the spirit world. Other people might have a different name for it. But we do know that for whatever reason, whether it's a God or a universe or a creative force of life or the person's own choice, they're able to check out momentarily, not to have to spend time in that moment. But I agree with Phil, remembering that moment as part of the evidence, by no means is it stuck in their memory and them having to experience it over and over again. It's just as Kerry's been talking, um, it reminded me of an experience I had. Um, not as a working medium, but as somebody that was researching passings and the spirit world and people's beliefs, because I, th I think it's healthy for all mediums to do some kind of questioning on their development. And I remember looking into past life experiences and, and, and people that experienced um, their loved ones passing and having experiences with them before the, the machines or they were pronounced uh, physically dead. And I remember, I can't tell you his name, but I remember a gentleman that I spoke to that, that really profoundly touched my soul where he shared his experience. And he was 72 at the time and his mum passed when he was 12, if I remember correctly. And um, he was calling up to his mother and mother wasn't responding. And he went into the room and, and found her still alive, conscious, but not able to speak or move. And he called the doctors and the doctors came and, and people came to help. And they forgot he was stood in the corner of the room at that age. And he says, what I witnessed next gave me my strength for the whole of the rest of my life. Because he says, my mother then appeared at the side of me and held my hand while doctors were discussing and working with my mother at the time. And she just lent into me with that smell of hers, with that love of hers and her voice saying, I will be fine. You will be fine. And I remember him getting so emotional. It touches me thinking about it. But he says, I can remember her voice. I can remember the clothes. I can remember the touch. I can still feel the squeeze of her hand on mine as all this was unfolding in front of me. For me, that gave him that proof that our soul or spirit leaves before that moment. So we're not in too much pain. We've lived our life. But yet, if we look at that action, it's absolutely beautiful that mother knew that son was in the room and she went to him and let him know and comfort him where he felt that he had the strength and he knew from that point for the rest of those 70 years or what at 60 years whatever it was his mum's always been with him always at those correct and, and appropriate times to get him through and he, he says I'll never forget that and he said if you can share my story with as many people and I've met countless people like this that have had an experience that helps us understand and give us our theories on what happens in the moment of death or what happens just before, just like that consciousness and that soul moving before we actually pass. Because a memory of mine with a, a loved one where I sat down with them in the hospital bed at uh, the side of them and I thought, that's not them. That's not who I remember. That's not the person. And it feels like there's a part of them missing. And as a child, as a youngster, I didn't know what I knew now but it makes so much sense that the spirit and everything leaves before that moment of passing. Thank you. I've interviewed probably a hundred people that have had near death experiences and some painful things happen. And they said that, like you say, Carrie, the consciousness is, is out 
and they can see what's happening. And so I, I appreciate that. that. That gives us all hope. No one wants to suffer and nor do we wanna see anyone suffer. So you bring up um, the gentleman and his mom. Could you explain what you believe with the dying process? Is somebody there greeting us and bringing us over? And what if we find when we get there? I, ha I would have to say from my experience, I want my own experience to say categorically, so I'll be sure to come back and let you know. But from my understanding, which isn't the same as a personal experience, there is that process where people from the spirit world are there in the room. There's been so many um, comments gathered, so many experience gathered where people have said, my mum reached out and said my father's name. I know in my in, in my life, I, I was I saw um, a person very close to me look at the clock and reach out and speak the name of the person in the spirit world. I knew that the rest of the family were were questioning and and often family members will say, no, 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 they're not here. I knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. So for me, absolutely, people in the spirit world are there waiting, not beckoning, but supporting and waiting to do the, the moment. Because I would imagine it's like being woken up from a deep sleep. You know, when you wake up really quickly and you're a bit befuddled as to, am I sleeping, am I awake? I would imagine, this is my imagination, that it might be something like that and a friendly face that says, it's okay, just breathe. Oh, you don't need to, just take your time is maybe what somebody needs. Mm. And what on that moment of moving over to the spirit world, it is, we've heard so many different accounts of what the spirit world looks like. Some people speak about it being a version like earth. Some people talk about it being like earth, but more vibrant and more colors. Some people talk about music and colors beyond anything we've ever seen or heard before. I wonder if it's similar to, um, if it's very similar to something that we've imagined within our own minds or what we can conceive. If we can conceive of something then, and it makes us comfortable and feel safe, then in that space, it's gonna to transpire to be like that. What happens after that? I've had people come back and say, oh, I would love a taste of beer. Mm -hmm. the smell of it but I just can't taste it and I can imagine that we all know when we want something of our favorite and we just can't get close to it but the memory of it is so vivid I can imagine being in the spirit world thinking oh I really like an ice cream and memory and mm -hmm. having the memory of it but I'm not dying to have the experience but I'm interested in what the experience will be and what other people's experiences might be, because I, I think it's really, really interesting. I totally agree. And, and again, from personal experience with several of my loved ones, family members in the spirit world, there's, there's been a, a majority of them that have spoke about their loved ones already in the spirit world, husbands and partners. Uh, and even one where I was very, very close to, and I was there at that actually moment where they mentioned somebody and the tear rolled down the eye and they took the last breath. So it shows for me that our loved ones are there willing to um, meet us and greet us. But I also believe dogs and pets as well are also there um, because the, 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 their love is unconditional, that they're faithful to us. But these experiences that Kerry's talked about and, and theories, we'd love to experience at the right time. We don't have any fear of dying. We have a fear of leaving our loved ones behind. Nobody wants to do that, especially children and everything else. But it's the interesting concept. How is it going to be? What will it feel like? As Kerry said, we have loved ones in contacts come back where they miss the typical ice creams or beers and things. And I was lucky enough to experience something as I've been talking to the idea, Kate thought memory came back to me where I used to be developing the trance state. And I remember somebody coming into the auric field so close 
and, and when I said, whoa, this is a little bit heavy, I can feel the weight of you, and I heard the words clear as day, I would love to feel the physical body, that's what I'm doing. So it, you can see what they may miss, the physical body, the interactions, uh, that, that physical side, as well as the taste and things. And there's been multiple contacts that where they've said, I'd love, I wish you put cigarettes in the coffin instead of a letter and all kinds of things. They, they've got a wonderful <laughs> sense of you. They don't lose that. I mean, some of them have asked for bottles of beer to be placed in afterwards and everything else, which is their personalities, is their characters and things they said in on the, the on the deathbed in the hospital or at home so I, I think that that personality and character really does ref, um, stay with them doesn't change but I also feel they still live on because we've had proof of some of them meeting and greeting other children or other people in the spirit world so I think there's a very theory and it's something I'm in a way looking forward to because I've got some very close family members I was Why, close not to not too soon not too soon not too soon I promise you that not too <laughs> soon hopefully um but I did there's some people I'd love to see again and meet again I, I even now the emotions run strong in me um but just the smells of them that, that bring memories back and and that's what mediumship's for it's inspiring the living to and and this is the 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 way that I understand my own mediumship is when we deliver a contact it's got to be delivered in the way that they want it with their evidence in the way that they need that evidence put in across. But it isn't just the evidence. It's the evidence is a key, if you will, to unlock other memories. So it can last a lifetime. I can still remember the first contact I ever had it still lives with me because the person that came through was very, very close to me. So, and over the years of developing and working, that person's always come back. So it shows there's a living presence there in the spirit world. So they do live on, they do meet us. And for me, I think that's a very warming, heartfelt message to us all that we never stop living. Oh, beautiful, beautiful advice. And even just talking about the beer and the cigarettes and things, I just always feel wherever we are, that we are present and we really enjoy what we can enjoy with our five senses. You know, things may be different there and fabulous, but different. So while we're here, you know, every sip of beer, or piece of chocolate on the tongue, hug that you get, petting your kitty cat, whatever that may be, just really, and really enjoy it. You mentioned children, Phil. There's a lot going on right now in the news where children are moving into the spirit world. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because I know every Sunday gathering, every demonstration we have, there are parents, there are children coming through. Parents are worried. Number one, you know, what did my child experience? Fear? Did they experience pain? Is somebody there with them? What, what is it like for them to be in the spirit world? If you guys wouldn't, would mm. mind, wouldn't mind just sharing your thoughts. Mm. There is an understanding um, that that we have that everybody, when they take their last physical breath, goes straight to the spirit world. There are some understandings that Phil and I don't agree with and can't um, agree with, which is that depending on how they pass, they may or may not go to the spirit world. Regardless of how anybody passes, child or adult, whether it be accidental or whether it be at their own hands, they always go to the spirit world and there is always people there and animals, if they so wish, to greet them over. There's no in between. There's no halfway. There's no other place that people go to. They go to the spirit world. And what we found is when we communicate on behalf of children in the spirit world, especially when it's been a very quick passing, like an accident, horrific things have happened. Um, where children have passed and their lives have been taken. There's children that have passed because of accidents that has been very, very quick. And when that child goes to the spirit world, automatically there is a fear within the parents and the family that they have suffered an additional trauma because as parents, our job is to keep our children safe. That's what parents do. And regardless of how our child passes to the spirit world, there will be a part of us always questions, could I have said, done or been somewhere different or said anything different to what happened? We have to understand that regardless of 
what we have done. There's nothing that we could have done anymore. And that comes across so, so, so often. The child will always say, you were the best mom, you were the best dad, you couldn't have done anything differently. Then they say, I didn't feel anything. I wasn't aware of there being any pain. I was aware whilst I was in the room or on the road or in the car of that moment of, oh my goodness. And then there was no pain, even when people have not passed immediately. When children have had accidents and not passed immediately, they always communicate through Phil and I that say, I didn't feel any pain. I was moved to a place where I was pain free. And they always talk about family members meeting them, even the family members they didn't know. Right. So when mom and dad say, but they never met my parents, doesn't matter. The child automatically recognizes family members because of a light and an understanding and a love that connects family members. Children are never ever left on their own. You'll never find a child um, communicating on their own. They always, if they're pre-verbal or very young, they will always come with a grown-up because we'd never let children go no. anywhere without a grown-up. Absolutely not. I mean, Sandra, if you saw a child in the middle of the street, you'd run over to the child and try and help and because you, you want to make sure they're all right. The spirit world is exactly the same. As Kerry said, it can be loved ones that meet the children they never met because we don't leave children alone. We, we love them, we care for them. And, and to know that they're in the spirit world, they've been greeted, they're looked after. Um, so some of these theories we hear, it, it just makes, if I had her, it would curl. Um, but again, some of the things we heard, I mean, I, I spoke to a, a lovely couple recently and was had the pleasure of doing a contact for them. And they said, well, another medium told me for every month my son has been in the spirit world, they've grown 10 years. And I, I, said, I said, excuse me, it's a really strange theory. Well, they should be talking to you like they're 40 years old. And I said, well, that's not took place, has it? I said, they brought back very joyful memories. Your son's interacted with you very personally. His personality and character has been here with some very objective evidence to prove he's here. I said, what's that tell you? And he said, well, he's still the same. I said, yeah, he hasn't transformed. He hasn't grown. He hasn't got older in the spirit world. In that small time. In, in that small time, because I think it was just a few months, about four months in total. And I said, so have the comfort. And what was really good of the son, he acknowledged a dog with him. Now, the person that this this the contact belonged to so i don't understand then the penny dropped and said oh my god that was my dog that made me so um felt part of the world when i was a child and and, and really was my lifeline all of a sudden you could see the emotion that came then to realize that the son was with that same dog and the dog was doing the same thing for the son as what it had done for the mother so you, you can start to see the compassion of the spirit world, the healing of the spirit world, the intelligence of the spirit world in every interaction they do. So for me as a medium, we have to be logical and rational in our presentation and understanding. But children are very dear to us all. And, and the thought of any of our children going to the spirit world before us is just something we don't want to think about. So when we've been part of that club that has lost children, the individual contacts that come through are profound, are, can be life-changing, can be uplifting. But we talked about the, the Sunday theme of the gathering about inspirational joy. Contacts with children bring so much joy because they're full of life, they're full of energy still. And, and what do we want to do as children? We, we want to make everybody happy. Uh, and that's usually the contact contacts from the spirit world should be inspirational should be joy should be about the hobbies or all about the things that inspires the living still so when children go they're always met they're always loved and, and that love's always shown in the contacts as well and this is where i think the theory of signs comes from because i know as a child with my parents i'm, I'm still lucky enough to have them both I wanted to do everything to make them happy. So I know that children, when in the spirit world, will do everything they can to get through to their parents, give them all kinds of different signs. That's why we believe 
that when people have a belief of a particular sign that's happening, we will never say that's not true because we know children would love to get your attention in any way, shape or form. You mentioned signs. Could you tell the story about the giraffe that you told on Friday? <laughs> it was in my early days. You've got to forgive me. So again, um, I love animals. I, I love all kinds of creatures and critters. Especially giraffes. Especially giraffes. <laughs> um, well, not especially giraffes, but giraffes. I had an experience with a giraffe and it was the South Lakes Animal Park in Cumbria in the Lake District here in England. And, um, you know, when you want to get to the front of the attraction and see them up close and personal, well, in this particular, um, I, I don't know what you call it, it was like a field, it had rhinos, it had giraffes, baboons, but we were on a like a pier going out into that field. And, and I, must admit, I must admit, it's one of the only zoos that really has impressed me because the animals just seem to be really free. But where all these people were congregated at the front, I thought there's no chance of getting near. And I, I just said to the spirit, well, if you really exist, you'll impress upon this giraffe and the giraffe will come round and I'll get to see it. Within seconds, this giraffe moved away from the crowd, but purposely walked all the way around the pier and came to me and stopped and just leant down. And all I heard was that the, the keeper who was on the pier he said, be careful, it might butt you. This tongue just went right up the side of my face. And I just closed my eyes to watch the chances. Then this tongue went back up the other side of the face. And it's almost like it looked at me with this smile and laugh. I don't know how animals do it, but they just had this look. And I just thought, you'll do for me that it shows the intelligence how so and i explain this in the way that the spirit world can impress upon our mind then surely animals have got in, influence intelligence, them. intelligence where they can be influenced as well so it, it was a wonderful i've had many experiences that's just one of the embarrassing ones but yes it's ex extraordinary yeah so don't let anybody tell you what's fine what isn't you know in your heart right. now there are people on planet earth that we don't get along with there are arguments between family members and things and what ha happens if somebody transitions to the spirit world and either you weren't talking you had an argument you never apologized sometimes being the person left behind with the things left unsaid you know just like a cancer inside that just keeps festering what would you have to say to that when somebody passes to the spirit world, the relationship doesn't end. In fact, it moves into a different way of existing. It's really, really difficult when people move to the spirit world. Yes, they came from there, but if somebody goes before you and you're the one left to, to sit in grief, it's really hard. And if you've said something that you wish you hadn't, or you haven't done something that you wish you had, then it can really sit with us. From the spirit world, they have no physical body, that's a given, but they still have emotions, they still have their mind, and they still have their presence and intellect. And that's the part of them that we loved as individuals. Yes, we might like the way they dressed, or we, we might have liked the, the height they wear or the size they wear, but actually we loved them for who they were, their personality and their characteristics. That doesn't stop. And what we would ask people to do is to begin a different kind of relationship with their loved ones. One that allows a conversation to take place. And there's a strange thing that happens at the beginning when somebody transitions to the spirit world. As the person left behind, we close our hearts because our hearts hurt and it's called grief so we close our hearts you okay i'm gonna you're gonna call, I'm gonna call. <coughs> um we close our hearts and we move into that process of grief and when we close our hearts anything to do with the person in the spirit world hurts and so any any thoughts about speaking to them just remind you how much you miss them any thoughts you have about acknowledging how much you love them touches that grief and it hurts but with time and it does take time people can build a new type of relationship but it means they have to open their hearts which means that they need to re-engage yes in the physical loss of the person but actually gain 
an emotional and spiritual connection with our loved ones. And in that place, they can imagine what their loved one would be saying to them. We've had a lot of people saying, it's almost like I can hear my husband's voice saying exactly what I know he'd be saying. Is it him? Well, if you feel it's exactly what he would say or the wife or the child would say, and it helps and it's of the right impression, then engage in it, explore it, converse with that voice, see if it ends up being something that you can interact with. We always say you don't need a medium to, con to converse with the spirit world. If you can have an open heart, once you've worked through that profound loss, you can actually find a relationship that's so, so deep emotionally and spiritually. And in those places, you can say the things you want to say. You can say the things you're sorry for not doing. You can offer forgiveness and you can ask for forgiveness. But if you're asking for forgiveness, often what you hear back is, there's nothing to forgive. Mm -hmm. Because there's an understanding about we are all individuals and there's, a, there's an insight into the bigger picture. Yeah, I think with having the fortunate experience to do contacts with people where this has happened, where last words haven't been spoken, where there's things got in the way or there's been family fallouts. When we go to the spirit world, we know there's an unconditional love there and we see the bigger picture. They don't change in the spirit world. They stay who they are. But Kerry's absolutely right. They'll, they'll see things how they were and you, you get an apology or they say, actually, you were the bigger person. I should have apologised when I had the chance. So we, we can see there's an understanding there of, of what's gone on before. And again, it's another form of proof that we've got that person. But the understanding and empathy from the spirit world is far superior to ours because when we're here within the body, sometimes we can be a little bit stubborn and won't let go of things. In the spirit world, we seem to lose that little bit and, and have an understanding of love and maybe the actions we've done and we get those apologies. Um, but the, the, if you get somebody profoundly stubborn in the spirit world, they'll still be profoundly stubborn. And what happens at the end of the contact, well, they'll say, well, yeah, I am sorry, you were right. It's a small gesture, but it shows they haven't changed, but yet they've put things to peace. They put things to bed. There's no issue between them anymore. And it can be a healing for them in the spirit world as well, because for them to express the sorrow and how their treatment is helps them grow and evolve in the spirit world but also it lets them back into our lives to where we can learn to understand and forgive as well so we, we have to look at again at that intelligence of mm -hmm. the communication why these communications take place and, and what the bigger purpose is and how it can set, set us off on a healing journey and and really bring peace to those rifts long after they've mm. gone and we can grow as people forgiving people for their actions maybe in the spirit world where we're still living and it allows us to have that freedom of life again mm. and with those um senses of letting go it allows us to be present in the moment for those that are still physically here it allows i know we're, we're we often hear appreciate who you have and say what's on your mind when it's in that moment. Tell the people who you love that you love them. Tell them how much they mean to you. Tell them that they matter. And often if it's never done in a family that you actually share your emotions, it can be the, hard to be the first one to do it, but well worth it. Because when one person starts in a family, everybody learns that it's okay. And then what you do other people do and it creates a more harmonious place for people to not go to the spirit world having not heard or not said what they wish they had oh yes I, I agree and wouldn't it be nice before we got over there that we got all our baggage cleaned up and we could just enjoy and explore i'm gonna have one more question um, before i want to talk a little bit about letters from heaven and inspirational writing and things like that um, I've had parents come to me and spouses come to me and say, because I'm grieving so deeply, I've been told that my loved one can't progress spiritually in the other world, in the spirit world. Can 
what we do here impact, or does what we do here impact their feelings? Could they be over there grieving the loss of us and they can't move on? Do you have any words about that? From what we, I mean, can only speak from the, the communications that we've been honored to do. Our loved ones do not like to see us hurting. They didn't like to see us hurting when they were here. They don't like to see us hurting from the other side of life, from the spirit world. However, they understand the grieving process. If somebody very close to Phil or I were to leave to the spirit world or just leave for another reason, I would have to sit and watch Phil and he would have to sit and watch me hurt. And there's nothing I can do to change that for Phil because it's part of the process, it's part of the healing process. The spirit world's no different. They can watch, they can bring their signs, they can bring their love, they can interact with us, they can magically put the song that we always relate to them on the radio or get our iPad or iPod to play something. They will do whatever they can to try and diminish um, the pain that we're in, but they know that they can't remove that pain because it's part of the process. But I've never heard of somebody being stuck or not allowed to progress because the person left behind is grieving. What I have heard is husbands and wives and children saying, whenever you need me, I will be there. I am not going anywhere. I'm there with you. But let's think about the spirit world, or maybe it will blow my mind if I do. In the spirit world, we can be lots of different places at the same time. So I could, if I went to the spirit world tomorrow, I have no intention of it, but I could be with Phil and you and my parents and my daughter. Oh, because I'm so clever. Not really. I could do that because we've heard of it happening in the spirit world. We've experienced it. We've experienced it. So because somebody's always with their loved one and giving them signs and consoling them and trying to make them feel better doesn't mean they're not doing something else at the same time. They will lessen their interactions with people but that is to allow the person the space to grieve and go through that process of grief they're not willingly moved on and, and left in the spirit world but if I know Phil needs space to get over and work through something I need to give him that space because I'm there I'm just a distraction and he doesn't actually do that healing process it's the same from the spirit world. They know exactly what we need. We might not want that experience because partners, children, husbands, wives, parents, we want them nearby all the time. Mm. But sometimes we find that there's gaps in that contact, but it's for our own progression. Yeah, I, I think we need to squash some of these theories and myths that are out there that our loved ones can get stuck or they need time to adjust because um, they go like Kerry said earlier they go to the spirit world um, but when it comes to contacts we've got to look at why it's done from the spirit world it's through simple fact love the love for the loved one still here they don't go anywhere that there's no special place it's it, it, pure love why that contact is happening they choose through love to come forward and if we look at the contact why they happen is because there's a need in the recipient so let's say um, Sandra um, I'm in the spirit world and I see that you're low I will come forward through love to lift you up and inspire you when I used to sit for that trance development I had it explained to me by the spirit world that they see us as light and when we feel low that light is dimmed a little bit and they see that and that's why they come forward the brighter that we shine, the brighter that we illuminate, they know we're happy and they can come to us, they can see us, they can watch over us. That's so much proof. But this is the reason contacts happen because there's a need within the person. So we can have 100 people and this is our philosophy. We don't choose who we go to, 
the spirit world choose who they come to because that light is dimmer than somebody else's and there's a need to have a tonic of an inspiration a pick me up to make them feel better to say look we're still around we're still caring for you we're still loving you so communications done through love so for me when people say that they're, they're stuck in the spirit world or they're lost I, I just don't get these theories because the spirit world's far more intelligent than we are so and we understand that concept of love is the communication and that evidence they bring is the key to unlock other memories that lift us and take that memory lane and, and really celebrate life then these theories we, we need to really squash out to let people know why and how the spirit world interact with us so we can have real confidence that our loved ones are with us looking after us and are in a place of well-being and positivity and love too mm. and that's a reason why mediumship exists is to reassure the people that still have time to live and breathe on this planet to make the most of every moment mm. grief is tough it's hard it's heartbreaking but at some point that grief will diminish but when grief hits the spot again even just for a moment it's like it never went away it's profound it's deep and it's intense but those <laughs> moments diminish and people say time is the healer it just allows us to become more comfortable with the place of grief it never disappears a moment of remembering touches that moment of wow they're not here the, the lady at the demonstration said i wake up every single morning in complete disbelief that my husband is not still walking and breathing on this earth that doesn't change but in the spirit world our loved ones want to reassure us that whilst we're here don't spend it in the shadow of grief voluntarily work through grief to the point where you can use them as an inspiration to live every moment for them and with them because if they if you've got the relationship with them you can take them with you the amount of contacts mm. we've done where the evidence has been we were going to take that holiday and and then i ended up here but i'm coming with you so please go um, or walk down that beach it will be painful but I'll be there with you please continue to do what you need to do to inspire you and let me be part of that our friends and family in the spirit world want to be part of our life still grief can sometimes shut us off but this the more we can be open to them the more we can have them still in our lives making memories and knowing that they are there with us they just can't be seen and I once heard it from the spirit world is that we miss them they miss us but they can see us every day what's different is we can't see them neither of us can hug each other but they can at least see us mm. so we have to appreciate that they are with us yeah. it carries just that, that last comment is really uh, brought another memory back where I, I was a, a friend passed to the spirit world and unbeknown to me as I went to the funeral that the two sides of the family were one big feud and was sat in the reception at, at the end and it was like who do I talk to and I thought if I move that way I could see eyes looking at me and I thought well, so I just sat there then I heard two of the uh, opposite members of the families just chatting small talk then they started laughing about memories my friend had done to them um, in their life and that transpired into more laughter, into more laughter. And I've got to say, it's probably one of the best funerals I've ever been to because they celebrated. The loss of somebody can also unite families, can unite people together. So grief is a very strange thing, what it can do to us. But I remember weeks or months later where I got a contact from my friend and he thanked me for being the start of that get together at the family. And I, I'm sat there. I said, yeah, I felt so awkward because I wanted to talk to him and I wanted to talk to her. But as I moved, I got Peter's. He said, well, that was the starting point. That was the linchpin why people started talking. You were, and I actually found out later that was true because people were asking me, who's he? And they started to talk about me and the interactions with my friend. And that started the fun, the laughter and everything mm. else. So you never know 
who or why you're going to be insp the inspiration that can change a lot of things. Oh, that's beautiful. And speaking of inspiration, let's talk about the inspirational writing, because you're, you're doing some different things within it. And we all want to be in touch with our loved one, or at least maybe open the doorway a little bit. Can you talk about what's going on? Well, through June on Tuesdays, and we record them so that the week one of inspirational writing um, has already been done, but it's it's a course that can be easily followed on the recording, because we firmly believe that the getting in touch with our own soul and getting in touch with our own inspiration and be motivated by that is a God given right for everybody. Even those who can't write or they think, oh, it's like saying I can't draw anything. But actually, if you're inspired and you've got some colours there, you can do anything. So we had a group of people on Tuesday tap into their own soul. And through a series of exercises, we got them working in a way that they never thought they would have done. And there were some beautiful words written. And it's showing them, a lot of people will say that it's the spirit world, but we wanted people to appreciate how wonderful their own souls can be. Doesn't necessarily have to come from the spirit world. We've got such a beautiful connection to our own spiritual truths. And there's some beautiful words can come through that. And that's what we found out on Tuesday. And this Tuesday, we're going to do letters from heaven which is where we can move from inspiration of our own soul to allowing the inspiration from somebody in the spirit world to be put pen to paper and to bring some words of comfort, some words um, of reassurance from the spirit world to the person in front of you. And we'll do that again in a layered way of learning because it's if we give people the exact end exercise, people get frightened. So we gently walk into it and allow them to explore that. And then the, week, the weeks after that, we're going to move to evidential communication and show how that can happen. And then the last week, it'll be about putting it all together and see what your soul's got up its sleeve and what you're inspired to do. It's something we feel really, really strongly about mm. because everybody has the right to be able to write inspirational word. Um, Neil Walsh, who wrote Conversations with God, he even writes in the beginning of each of his books, he said, I am sure this is not God I'm speaking to, but I am speaking to the God within. Therefore, it's my own soul's emanation and words and I have to tell you some of the answers in these books I found extremely helpful so there's definitely some spiritual truths in there. Yeah. I think Elaine you know tonight on the Sunday gathering is testament to that, that that course where she has a wonderful ability and she described it's like a being inside that just has the answers and we've all heard that term you can find the answer by going inside so to hear her reach inside uh, and bring these wonderful words out from her own soul not the spirit world but from self is inspirational i mean those words she wrote the way she delivered it the way that she talked mm. it for us was really impressive and Letters from Heaven, um, I used to sit with a wonderful gentleman called John Gilbert and my early development, and he used to give us a sealed envelope and he just put a name on the front of it and said, you're going to write a letter from their loved one. Never told us which loved one was in the spirit world. So we got the letter, we went home, we opened it up and there was just blank paper inside and we had to fill these blank sides in with that inspiration from the spirit world and we were to give it back and maybe a week or two later we found out where we get things sent back and, and it's incredible the intelligence of the spirit world how they can impress their loving memories but how the mind as we're writing seems to go into a world of its own and be inspired so we know we can be inspired by that power of the spirit world we know we can be inspired by our own soul which elaine did for us on the sunday gathering so well but then as we move forward we can interact with that power within us and use it in life use it in our spiritual development and use it 
and on people around us to help pick them up. And we also use the inspiration in the talking as well. I know we've got a weekend later in the year about inspirational talking and presentation. And you did the address today and it is inspired and a lot of people will shy away from that. But once you move from the writing into the speaking, you allow your soul just to share what's within the very heart of you. And then often the spirit world will come in and just influence what's going to be spoken. So the writing to the speaking, I think everybody has that ability within them where they feel the words just need to be spoken or you feel the right words that you need to say to somebody coming up. It's an incredible ability to be able to have and it's one that we believe every single person has. Mm because we all know when the right time to say the right thing to somebody is. Well, it's inspiring and it feels good to be in that presence. So uh, for our listeners and viewers, what we're talking about now may be way in the past, but I will still have the links if you want to enjoy the replay of the classes at wedontdie.com, just click on the store button. So our clairvoyance Saturday is coming up on June 18th. It's a five hours. So maybe we could just talk briefly about that. I know we've got some students that are in your psychic and mediumship classes, but you've also invited people that are beginners to, to come mm -hmm. along. Can you talk a little bit about clairvoyance? Because I think it's a it's a nice entryway in because we all, oh, I love this, just developing our own connection with our soul. It is. And, and clairvoyance is, we, we always say that it's an art form. It needs to be really understood because we get shown pictures from the spirit world, we can pick things up psychically, but it's how we logically and rationally interact with that picture. We don't just describe the picture. If we say that it's been given by the spirit world, there's an intelligence behind it. So what's in the center of that picture, we have to depict and make statements of. So it can prove life after death, it can find the recipient in an audience with where you use it, but it's how we, engage and interact with that picture we don't just as i said describe it we go into the picture we open it up and we can see so much more it can give us names it can give us locations it can tell us great detail about those people in the spirit world it can open a whole new world up it can make your evidence a lot stronger it makes your presentations more logical and rational and profound and it can be the difference between understanding it and really making somebody who's skeptical a real believer with with the strength of the information that you can pick out of this mm -hmm. picture because people in the beginning of their development will as phil has said describe their picture so i see a lady and she has a hat and she's got a walking stick and she's walking on a path of red pebbles well, actually, if you know how to use a picture like that, it can tell you names, it can tell you personalities, it can tell you who the relationship is, it can tell you um, what the lady is wanting to um, share in her message. So to understand it, people only get maybe a tenth out of their picture. But what we'll do is help people understand how they can get a hundred percent just from one or two pictures. Yeah, and you, earlier on, uh, Sandra, you mentioned the, the recent demonstration. And if you remember, there's a contact with the basketball shirt and that's all I saw at the beginning was a, an image of a basketball shirt. Well, I knew it was a son. I knew that they played for the school. I knew it was basketball. I knew the name on the back of the shirt. I could also see that the way it was presented to me, it was like a, a present or, or a presentation. That's how I knew the person wanted it on the wall. It brings so much joy. But as we enter into the picture it tells us the rest of the story we can see the personality we can see the successes the joys the wins everything and it brings for that loved one that's receiving that contact absolute proof really mm. strong proof that their loved one's there and clairvoyance happens in the psychic as well people assume that clairvoyance is purely from the spirit world it's not your soul can pick up psychic clairvoyant images and they can be used as well. So we'll be covering that as well in the course. Oh, I love this. You know, it's important for me to be able to help people understand grief and 
move through it and also believe in the afterlife and that our loved ones are around. But what's also so important to, to all of us, I believe, is to help people live a powerful life now and to know that there's some tools, whether it be clairvoyance or inspiration, that we can tap into the divine wisdom within us. I can see less books being purchased. I mean, we still want to enjoy books and courses and things like that, but could we all just take a moment to imagine what our divine soul may teach us and how we could live life, not always looking outside for the answers, but inside. So with that, our time is coming to an end. Anything else you guys would like to share about what's going on or closing words, or if somebody wants to jump in and get involved yeah. with Carrie and Phil what, what do we do absolutely because I, I know there's a lot of people out there that appreciate the, the we don't die community the mediumship all the courses we've got some really exciting news we're just about to launch an app so we can be with you and you can be with us wherever we go in the world and I know people like to read so there's going to be lots on there as well just the tips of your fingertips on your phone sort of thing so it's going to it's an exciting prospect it's bringing everything into reality to share education, to share a bit of wisdom, to have communication, all kinds of things. We're not going to tell you everybody. We're really excited about it because we want to inspire people. We want to help people develop. We want people in every moment of the day, if they're interested, to have access to all kinds of different things about the spirit world. So that's a little bit of exciting things that's just about to come up. Mm. And for those that might be in a place that's a little bit difficult at the moment, know that it's meant to happen. Know that there's no way around it or avoiding. Grief, the only way, as you said it earlier on, Sandra, the only way through it is to go through it. But it is a journey that is well worth taking. We know that if we love somebody and we lose them to the spirit world or other circumstances, it hurts. But please know your loved ones are reaching out to you from the spirit world, not to say, don't live. They're saying, live for the two of us. Live for all of us. Get as much life in there as possible. Get life experience and learn. We've got, you said earlier on about opportunity comes on the edge of the comfort zone. It really, really does. And life is for living. So please allow yourself that space to grow and to acclimatize to this new way of being. But know there is a different way just around the corner that's mm. slightly better. And it's something Kerry said I want to leave people with. You don't need a medium to be in contact with your loved ones. We're all entitled to that direct communication. So maybe sit quiet, maybe while you're on the subway, on the train, on the bus, in the passenger in a car, just have a quiet moment and send your love out. And maybe that thought of a memory, just to for them to see your light, maybe in need and watch what comes back. See what signs you get, see what you hear, maybe see or feel when you're in that quiet moment and be aware at any time as you send that and leave that thought there that they can inspire you at the opportune moment and we believe that contacts happen naturally at the right time for that right healing process to start beautiful and beware of the giraffes yes <laughs> yes for big long wet tongues that go there. It was funny because there's a little bit where it rubbed its head on me as well. And I was thinking, can this get any worse? Just covered in some oh, everything else. Oh, it's just, it's so wonderful. Well, Carrie and Phil, thank you for being our guests yet again. Oh, we'd love you. And you can find out more about Carrie and Phil. It says it on their screen, but also if you're listening, the spirit and soul foundation.co.uk. And to our listeners or viewers if this is your first time here our home base is we don't die.com if you click on the store page or the calendar you can see everything that's coming up you can listen to oh, over 400 hours with myself between this show and my latest show shades of the afterlife on iHeartRadio. also i am a giver and at that store page is a copy of my audiobook 
at We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. You can use the coupon code free and enjoy that. Chapter 10 is How to Survive Grief. And it's an interesting read. I think it's the book I wrote that I most read myself because there's always so, there's so many helpful tools for living life powerfully. Also at wedontdie.com, you can join our Facebook group. There's over almost 7,000 members, which is hard to believe. And come introduce yourself. We are here to support you not only believe in the afterlife and through grief, but to have a great life. So we've got some great upcoming classes with Carrie and Phil. And again, if you're listening to this 20 years in the future, you still go to the website and we'll have the replays available for you. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain and I'm always so happy to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that well, life is an education for the soul. We can learn at any moment. And we just want to savor everything we can with our five senses. Our life here on earth is important, maybe grand when we cross over, but it's important right now. So I really want to thank you for listening or for viewing, and we'll see you soon.